today on the show, Pacific Rim Uprising's Adria Arjona teaches me a lesson. I want to see exactly what you're doing wrong. While the rest of the cast ranks movie robots. And you reveal your dream movie adventures. It's Thursday, March 15th. And this is the IMDb Show. So Tim, I was rewatching The Goonies last night, right? Okay. One of my favorite childhood adventure movies. And I realized that even as an adult, I would 100% still like hop on a bike, throw on some Cyndi Lauper, and just join those kids on a crazy adventure. What about you, favorite adventure movie? Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, that palace scene where they just lay out the eyeball soup, the monkey brains, snakes. the baby snakes haunted me for years. You know that. He's crazy. Now, Disney's new space adventure, A Wrinkle in Time, is out and is a possible new contender to the movie adventures we want to go on list. Totally. Uh, and it also has us wondering what classic movie adventure you all would want to go on. The film adventure I would love to go on is Aladdin. You don't want to go for a ride, do you? I want to ride that magic carpet. You know what I'm saying? Is it safe? The Chronicles of Narnia. I link up with the lion. We we'll talk business and stuff. Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. That'd be the coolest shit ever to ride a dinosaur if you could try to ride one. You think that'd be possible? For sure. Ride a T-Rex in a battle. That would be one of the coolest things in the world. Savagery. That's that's chaos, dude. Dumb and Dumber. I like it a lot. You know, they had a great time being pretty dumb. And I'm pretty dumb, and I want to have a great time, so I feel like we would fit in pretty well. Harry Potter. Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Harry Potter, man. Thank you. Going to Hogwarts. Make myself fly. Learn magic. If I had a magic wand, I would just make so much money in the world. <laughs> Fame isn't everything. Gotta be Star Wars. Okay, hit it! You want to hear my Alec Guinness impression? Your father wanted you to have this when you were old enough. Your destiny lies along a different path from mine. When Pacific Rim Uprising hits theaters everywhere soon, fans of giant robots versus monsters are gonna be very happy. And you're gonna be even happier when you meet one of its stars, today's guest, Adria Arona. Jules Reyes, JTEC. Mara, Cadet. Jake, Ranger, apparently. Heard a lot about you, Gonna Ghost. Adria Arjona. Adria Arjona. No. Arjona. No. I'm gonna call you Double A today. Thank that, you. That's the best that's way to go. That's usually what people call me. Uh, Double A, thank you so much for being here thank on the you. show. Congratulations on Pacific Rim Uprising. The first film was directed and written by Guillermo del Toro, who was the big winner at the Oscars, right? How come you say his name right and not mine? He won an Oscar. <laughs> I'll come back when I win mine. <laughs> Tell us where this film picks up. Well, this film picks up 10 years after Guillermo's story. And it's kind of how everyone's getting ready for the next attack. I don't think people really understand how enormous these Jaegers are until you actually see the movie. Well, he's pretty big. I mean, there's skyscrapers with arms and legs and, and guns and they shoot things and can jump and maneuver in ways that I've personally never seen anything. And while filming, we worked on green screens kind of looking up in the air, pretending there was a Jaeger there. Oh, that's confusing. And give us a bit of perspective. Where does your character, Jules Reyes, fit into the storyline? Oh, Jules Reyes is an engineer and she's a freaking badass. Saber Athena, Guardian Bravo, and Bracer Phoenix are good to go. It's not a lot to work with. She kind of has this romantic vibe with both John's character and with Scott's character. So how'd they lure you back? It's a long story, but if you, if you want to talk about it, we can meet up. She's busy. So I got to play around a lot with John and he's so freaking funny that it just, it was hard for me to kind of keep a straight face. Let's just stay focused. Well, earlier this week, I actually got a chance to sit down with both Scott and John, and they mm -hmm. both had something to ask you. Adria, here's John. Ooh, he looks good. Adria, uh, who was the most um, attractive man on set between myself and Scott Eastwood? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Here's what Scott had to ask you. I want to know, once and for all, who's it going to be? Me? Scott? Handsome, dashing. Good looking. Or John. Oh God, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> if he does say so himself. But it was the same question. I feel like who would I marry and who would I date? Right. It's a better question. Okay, okay, so let me ask you this. Uh huh. Who would you marry and who would you date? I would date Scott and marry John. Now explain that. Oh man, this is gonna sound terrible. <laughs> it's too late now. I will date Scott because I think It'll be fun and exciting, but I will marry John because I think we have a lot more things in common. He's also spicy, he's African, I'm Puerto Rican. I think I can identify with him a little bit more. 
I'm with it. Uh, we love trivia here at INDB. Okay. Give us a great piece of information that only you know about Pacific Rim for the IMDb page. Oh, I did my own stunt. Me tackling Scott. They had a stunt double there for me and told me I could go home and I decided to stay and do my stunt. Were you ever scared of, you know, hurting him? Because I know you've got some power right there. Some huevos. Some what? Huevos. Some huevos? Huevos are eggs. Can I have huevos? You have huevos, yes. darling. <laughs> You're a man. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm right, open. that's what it means. You they got some huevos. Balls. I got a, <laughs> it's, we need a, we need a Google <laughs> Translate here. Uh, <laughs> Now, up next for you is a comedy, Life of the Party, starring Melissa McCarthy. The story is about Melissa going back to college after a midlife crisis, and her daughter is in college with her, and I'm one of the roommates. I think those guys just checked you out. Like, just looking at my smock. Is she as funny off screen as she is on screen? Oh, yeah. Like, you're crying on set. Like tears running down your face. This, essentially a Google. Ask me anything. Turn off your Google. You're scaring me. Because it's so freaking funny. So when I was with John and Scott, we decided to play a game. Take a look, it's important, because you're gonna determine who's the champion. Scott, let's start strong with a game. Robot battle bracket. This is you versus John. Hello. I'm gonna give you your pairings and you're gonna tell me who's gonna win in a fight to the death, robot versus robot. Mm. John Boyega, you ready? I'm ready for this. All right, we have T-1000 versus Megatron. The T-1000, it would basically liquidate, go inside Megatron, take him over. This brings us down to Sonny and K2SO. Um, K2SO, got that backup, he's got the connects. Sonny's by himself, having weird dreams, Will Smith with one hand. What am I? Are you ready? Okay. Who's gonna win? Robocop versus T-800. And why? T-800. Why? For sure, I mean, that's the Terminator. <laughs> the next tier, Ultron versus Optimus Prime. I'm gonna give it to old, uh, Optimus Prime. He's gonna get in there, get dirty. You don't know what you've wrought upon yourself. So then it comes down to this. Two classics, by the way. Classics. You've ended up with Terminator T-800 versus Optimus Prime. This is good versus evil, so I gotta go with good. I'll be back. Okay, who wins this? T-1000 versus K-2SO. T-1000? T-1000 gonna beat him up, man. Slice him open with the, uh, with the finger. Nice. So T-1000 wins this one. Yep. Transformers General in Command. Yep. We're going to take it to the studio with Adria, who's going to determine who's the champion of the Robot Battle Bracket. Fantastic. So, Robot Battle Bracket needs a champion. It's okay. down to you to determine who it is. Okay. And this is very serious. This comes with okay. a lot of I'm kind of responsibility, like yeah. game face on. Copy um, that. It's about T-1000 versus Optimus Prime. Okay, he's just so much bigger and has so many more functions. He can turn into liquid metal and can kind of form anything he really wants. Do you want him to do any no. mini mini mo? Optimus, Optimus Prime? Yeah. There you go, Optimus Prime. Spectacular. Adria, we put a call out on Twitter to send questions in for you. Are you ready okay. for the first one? Yes. At Task Force X, what was the most exciting part of your role in Pacific Rim? The action scenes, because it was one of the only opportunities where all the actors kind of got to have one scene together and crazy in terms of when you crazy in terms of you have like fire like going off things right behind you things sky. falling off the sky looking at a robot size of a skyscraper you're all in green screen it's hot you're super dirty and you're with some of your favorite people all right and at smaxi asks i loved emerald city what did you learn from the original wizard of oz that helped you play your dorothy this is going to sound so cliche but it really is home is where the heart is i think because i was in budapest so far away from my family and every time either my dad would come and visit me or my mom would come and visit me it made me understand that concept and made me do a better job at playing dorothy definitely not kansas it's now time okay. to figure out what you're watching this weekend in this week's watch list i think i might go watch tomb raider because it's just a badass woman yeah. kicking ass and i love the fact that that's happening it'll be an adventure Death is not an adventure. Flower is another one that I really want to watch. Damn, junkies are supposed to be skinny. I think it's so bold and raw and organic. At least my daddy is not in jail. 
Kerry, what's on your watch list? I'm going to be watching Love, Simon. Have you seen the new post? About the closet a gay kid at school. What? After seeing Lady Bird, I'm kind of on a kick to see these coming of age high school movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll also be watching a, a Netflix special called uh, Darren Brown, The Push. He's an illusionist and mentalist from the UK. Oh, wow. I've seen some of his live shows. This is his first special that he's doing in America. Can we be manipulated through social pressure to commit murder? Tim, what have you got on your watch list? Seven Days in Entebbe. That's the film that I'm going to be watching this weekend. We call upon revolutionary movements everywhere to focus the attention of the world on the Palestinian people's struggle. It's based on a true story about a Air France plane that was hijacked and it's set into place the most daring rescue mission of all time. Anyone who tries to resist me will be shot. It's that time where we got to say bye, Adria. Thank Did you. I butcher it? Have I got it right no, at this you, point? You're, you're doing so much better. Congratulations, Pacific Rim Uprising. It's out March 23rd. Uh, before we go, head on over to imdb.com slash show where you can rate the show and watch all of our previous episodes and to take us out. It's this week's Trailer Trailer. Are you going somewhere? No, we're going somewhere. Jeez. Are you ready to be Tom Brady? We the Brady Bunch. We the, the Brady Bunch. Do you think Tom Brady is in the Brady Bunch? It's the dad, right? No, no, he isn't. Let me give you a tip. You want to make some money here? Use your white voice. My white voice? I'm never talking about Will Smith's wife. Like this young blood. Hey, Mr. Kramer. This is Langston from Regal View. It is wonderful to see you. Yes, it is, isn't it?